Hey y'all, welcome back to my kitchen. Today, I'm making some recipes that I saw on TikTok. Yes, I'm obsessed. No, I'm not sorry. So today's video, TikTok made me make it. TikTok. Now raise, I want to see a show of hands of anybody who is currently on TikTok. It's my new favorite thing. I'm obsessed with it. I'm also super late jumping onto this whole bandwagon thing. Well, because I love food and recipes, a whole lot of what I see on TikTok is food. So I thought this would be really fun to make four recipes that I saw on TikTok because they just look epically good. First one, the infamous purple drink. All right, y'all, the purple drink. I have been so excited to try this ever since I saw it. The girl I saw post this originally, her name is Kelsey underscore McDaniel. I'll link it all below, but this looks so, so good. So first things first, you need blue Hawaiian punch. It's the blue typhoon, I think it's called. Yeah, blueberry, berry blue typhoon. And you need to dump it out to this first line. Thankfully, I have nephews and they're very excited about their Hawaiian punch in the house. The other thing that you need is Bacardi Dragonberry. Now it has to be Dragonberry is my understanding. I can only get this huge big one when I went to the liquor store, so we tried it with another recipe. Don't judge our life. We also need two things of Kool-Aid, blue raspberry lemonade and tropical punch. So let's do this. First things first, we are going to take our Kool-Aid. We're gonna dump it directly in here. See if I can do this without making a big mess. The tropical punch one is what makes it purple. So this one and the blue raspberry lemonade. I feel like this brought back childhood, you guys. I haven't had any part of Hawaiian punch or Kool-Aid or anything like that since I was a kid. So this is kind of sort of fun. All right, now we're gonna put the lid on and we're gonna shake it up. All right, now it's purple. Now here comes the fun part. We need 250 milliliters or a fifth of the dragonberry. So I'm just gonna measure it out here and we're gonna pray we can get it all the way up to the top. It doesn't overflow. Okay, first 500 going in. Oh no, I just had a feeling. I just had a feeling I wasn't gonna be able to do this in a clean way. All right, let's try again. Okay. Only slight mess, slight spill. Okay, I need another 250. It's a lot. It's a lot of booze. Gosh, we just have a teensy bit left. Okay, let's see if I can do this without spilling it all over the place again. Oh man, it's gonna fill all the way up. All right, so now that I feel a little <laughs> guilty about the amount of alcohol that just went in here, we're gonna shake it up again. Oh, spillage. I made a big mess, y'all. Okay, good and tight, gonna shake it again. Now, let me grab a cup and we'll give it a try. Okay, I borrowed a couple of Jimmy's fancy whiskey ball ice and let's give it a shot here. I don't know that why I cannot do this without making a huge mess. I promise you guys, I'm usually better at this kind of stuff than this. All right. She's boozy. <laughs> That's really good, y'all. Here's the thing is once you take a second drink, Here's what I noticed about it. You don't taste the alcohol anymore. Like your first drink, you taste the alcohol. Your second one, you taste nothing. So this is one of those drinks as an adult that will bite you without you realizing it. Like you could drink half of it and then try to stand up and then realize it's really not gonna happen. That's one of those kind of drinks. But I give it nine out of 10 stars, delicious. 
Get it, Kelsey. I'm gonna continue to drink this through the rest of the episode. Just cause I can. So, second recipe. This is from a girl called Lindsay Melissa. Now, she called these apple nachos. I thought at first it sounded kinda weird, but then I decided maybe it's amazing. So, first things first is we cut up an apple, have it here in our bowl. She used peanut butter, but I'm going rogue and using Trader Joe's Speckaloos cookie butter because it's gone. So, we're gonna just take I put it in there for like 30 seconds in the microwave. So we're just gonna put this all over our apples. This is how she did it in the video. Gonna, we're gonna be generous because, you know, it just sounds amazing. Okay, these are little baby apples that I had, so there probably should be more here. To that, she added some granola. I have our very favorite French vanilla granola. Just gonna put some on top. Know how much to add. That's the thing about TikTok videos is they never give you any measurements, so you never really know. She added cinnamon and sugar to hers, but I don't really want to do that, so I'm going to add honey to the top of that. And this was her apple nachos. Let's give it a shot. The genius of this. That is so good. Jimmy, do you want to try one? Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. That speckles though, I feel like that was a wise decision on my part. Wow. Well, y'all, that, I give that a 10 out of 10. That's really good. Like, I could see and eat this for like a snack watching a movie or something. Like, that is so seriously crazy good. I think if you use peanut butter instead of the speckles butter, do some cinnamon and sugar, but yes, yes. The third recipe we're gonna try is from someone called Living, Living in Midwest. I don't know if she's the originator of this, but she's the one that I saw do this. Now this is called the TikTok ramen. Now I know there's another version of like a famous TikTok ramen that's going around right now. This is not that one. I'm gonna try that one, but this is not it. All right, let's turn our heat on here so our pan can start to get hot. Let's talk about the ingredients that you're gonna need. So we're going to need a fourth a cup of brown sugar, a tablespoon of butter, just a little pinch of everything but the bagel seasoning, some garlic, an egg, cooked ramen noodles. I just did the creamy ramen. The thing is though, you don't need the seasoning packet, just the noodles. I pre-cooked mine so this would be easier. You need to do that in order to make this. Crushed red pepper flakes and some soy sauce. So first thing we're gonna do, we're hot already, is we're going to put our butter in. So it can start melting. Might be a little hot. Turn my heat down a little bit. So let's do our butter here. As that's starting to melt, I'm gonna put in the garlic. Now, I feel like you should just measure the garlic with your heart. <laughs> it depends on how much you love garlic or don't love it. I like it, so I use quite a bit. I'll wait till we get a little fragrance on this here, but we don't wanna burn it. Okay, to this, this is my little cup for a stand. I'm gonna add some red pepper flakes. Just a few shakes. Mix this up. Ooh, that's, that smells really good. Okay, I'm gonna do some soy sauce. A little bit. I'm assuming that's why we're not gonna use our seasoning packet because there's way too much sodium in that. Now we're gonna add our sugar. I'm gonna let this dissolve and melt down. Ooh. That looks kind of amazing, actually. So now, we're gonna add our noodles. I just cooked these, so turn my heat down even more. So to toss this in here. I don't have any lumps of sugar still there. Okay, now I'm gonna turn my heat off for this because you don't need it super hot to do this part. So now we're gonna dump an egg in here. Just whole, I didn't beat it up or anything. Just put it in there like that. I'm just gonna beat it up and kind of mix it around until it cooks. 
Now my pan was hot enough and I like kind of a runny egg, so I don't wanna overcook the egg part. So we're just gonna use our residual heat. Alrighty, our egg's cooked. I'm gonna put it in my bowl here. We're just gonna recycle the bowl that we had our cooked noodles in. There's not a darn thing wrong with that. All right, that's our finished product. And what we're gonna do now is just sprinkle some everything but the bagel seasoning on top of there. Now I think that's kind of weird. <laughs> Why would you put that in ramen? But you know, let's go for it. Let's give it a taste, guys. Still smoking. Hold on a minute. Oh, that's genius and I'm pissed I didn't think of it. Oh my God, y'all. Wow. It's sweet, yet you get some of the heat from the red pepper flakes and it's creamy because of the butter and the soy sauce just gives you enough salt. Whoa, like, whoa. Do you wanna try it, Jimmy? I feel like you really should. That is so crazy good. Oh my God. It's sweeter than I like it. You don't want less sugar? Yeah, less sugar. Maybe. But ooh, ooh. I feel like we should get your sister out here to try it. She'd appreciate this. Oh my gosh. This one, can I give it an 11? Oh my God, you guys. Mm-hmm. Make that one for sure. All right, y'all, I think I saved the best for last. These are Szechuan spicy potatoes and they're from Chef John Kung. Now, I love, 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 love to watch his content. He is incredibly interesting, so incredibly talented with what he does. So I followed all of his instructions, <laughs> hoping I don't screw this up. I feel like I'm gonna you know, try to flex my muscles here with this one. So let's go over the ingredients so we know what we need. First, we're going to need Chinese soy sauce. I have it here. Black vinegar, a little bit of canola oil, cooking oil, some dried spicy Chinese chilies, some ginger, garlic, and the star of the show, the Szechuan peppercorn. Now you guys know Jimmy and I love our Szechuan food. That's why I had to make these. I think he's gonna love them. And we've got potatoes here. Now what I've done with the potatoes, per his instructions, is I've cut them pretty thin and small. I let them soak for about 10 to 20 minutes and then I've had them setting out and drying. Now the most important thing about these potatoes is you want a low starch potato, like a new potato or a red skin potato. So that's what I've used here, I use little babies. So we're gonna fire the wok up, get her hot. Now what's important about this recipe is that it's gonna go fast. So you need to have everything pre-measured, everything needs to be ready to go because you're gonna move quick. All right. I'm gonna put a couple tablespoons of our oil in here. All right, first we're gonna take our dried chilies, put them right in there. Okay, toss these around. My oil needs to be a little hotter. They're gonna start cracking and popping on you. There it is. Now we're warm. All right, next we're gonna throw in our Szechuan peppercorns. Now these are gonna give you some fragrance and some serious deliciousness going on. Whoop, come on popping at me. Ooh, yeah. They have such a floral, beautiful smell to them. Love. Okay, I'm gonna heat down a little bit. Don't wanna burn anything. Next, we're gonna throw our, our ginger in. And our garlic. You wanna let this cook just until you get some good fragrance on it. Ooh, smell those peppercorns, wow. They're floral, what's really cool about these is that you get, I think I need a little more oil. You get a really beautiful sort of numbing to your tongue when you eat them. And they almost have a floral property to them. So they smell floral, they taste floral, but they numb your mouth. It's pretty incredible. All right, we got our ginger. That good stuff going. Let's throw some soy sauce in. This is just a regular Chinese soy sauce we have going on here. And now we're gonna dump some potatoes. I may have made 
may have done too many. So I'm not gonna use them all. I'm gonna toss these in. Incorporate everything in there together. Now I've actually never had these before. One thing he said on his video is these you don't commonly see outside of China. And having not been to China, I haven't had them. Now we, one of the reasons you soak your potatoes is to pull a lot of that starch out. That will cause them to, I'm sure I stole my propane. That'll cause them to cook quicker, crisp up quicker, so we just need to move fast. Had a little mishap. Had to change my little butane thing out on my stove. Okay, now we're going. Now I got sizzle. Now one thing he said is knowing when these potatoes are done is gonna just come from practice. So I'm not gonna know, but I'm gonna give it a good shot. Now I got some good heat, here we go. That's how you want it to sound. Now you're not gonna add your vinegar until the very, very, very end. You want everything to have a chance to touch the hottest part of your wok. All right, now I'm gonna throw a little vinegar in here. Now what's important to know that he mentioned is you want your vinegar to be last because the vinegar will start to break down the properties in your potatoes, making them mushy. You don't want them to be mushy, you want them to be a little crisp. Okay, enough to let that coat everything. Hopefully using my butane didn't ruin it. All right, I'm gonna plate some up and we're gonna give it a try. It's, he said it's best to serve this like rice and cilantro because it'll be kind of sour, but I didn't make rice, so I'm gonna give this a shot. Let's see how I did. Hopefully I didn't screw it up. Hmm. Using my, but losing my butane messed up the crispiness a little bit. But, flavor? Pretty darn good. You definitely get the numbness from the Szechuan peppercorns in there. The minute you eat it, my, my tongue went numb. And you don't get much spice from the peppers, but you get some really delicious sort of salt and vinegar on the end. It's really, really good. You wanna try, Jimmy? I think I just needed to have a higher heat to let them really crisp up, but flavor's good. My mouth's so numb. <laughs> It's a crazy sensation. If you guys ever have an opportunity to eat Szechuan food, do it. I have some great suggestions for you for it because that numbness, that numbness is just crazy the way it feels. It's tingly yet floral, doesn't hurt. It's really interesting. I hope you enjoyed this. This is a different kind of video for me. I just thought it would be super fun to do something a little different and highlight some other food creators that I think are really incredible. So there's no recipe for you guys to follow this time on my website, so you don't have to worry about that link down there. But all of my social media is there as well. And I put all of the links for all the TikTok creators that made these recipes down there as well, so you can go give them a follow. Thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye.